Great. Hi, everyone. This is where we thought about having some like light jazz playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't <need> <laughs> I know. Are, are, we on view? are we on view now? Kathy, your light is so good. Oh, is that oh, a headshot? <laughs> Another headshot. <laughs> oh, it's a. <laughs> it's frozen. How did she like do that? She not so, <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. Hi, everyone who's joining us. We're watching the numbers climb as you tune in. Tune in. Is it tuning in? Click in. Click in. I suppose. I well, have zooming in. in. Click in. Oh, 41. That's good. Yeah. Wait, where are y'all seeing that? Where are we seeing it? Uh, participants. Yep. Oh. Yep. oh, okay. Here we go. Yeah. Now we can see. I love it. <laughs> Justine's. I love it. Um, Let's see if my husband's on yet. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do you see the names? <laughs> I just scroll down the I go to the attendee list. Oh, the attendees thing? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, Clint. Hi. Yeah, all right. Oh, hi, hi Clint. This is great. Hello. Good Meredith. Linda. Mom. Good. Let's see Paige Linda. Linda. Hi, Linda. Should yell up to my husband. Get on now. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> Come on, honey. <laughs> I'm gonna give people a couple, maybe a minute or so more to. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, it's four ex exactly right now. I'm not seeing the names as they come in unless they chat to me. Are you guys mm. seeing? Oh, uh, you. If you hit attendees, you can see all oh, the names. names. Oh, excellent. Oh, oh, I see so many, so many names. I know. Yeah, learning as we go. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Together. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, ask questions, everyone. Make sure you ask questions, please. Yeah. Please right. get involved. Well, what do you say? It's a, it's at a, a little over 50. It's 401. Yeah, let's go. Let's do go it. Okay. So, hi, everyone. I'm Jenna Talbot. I'm the editor in chief of New England Home Magazine. It's so great to see you all here. We're really excited you could join us today. Our July-August issue is hitting the <laughs> summer spot for all of us. Um, beautiful porch I'm on. My <laughs> we hope you <laughs> um, I'd like to introduce, and, and she'll introduce everyone else, our managing editor, Erica Finch. Um, Erica, give a wave. Yep, uh, she'll be our host this afternoon. Erica not only wrote our cover story for this issue, but was lucky enough to attend the shoot last summer at interior designer Mally Scott's Falmouth home with photographer Sarah Winchester. So we're missing our producer Karen Lebeck Brent. Um, so she's actually on a shoot right now, but she did send in some comments to share as it was a day that truly mixed business with pleasure. I wish I could have been there myself. Um, and now I'll turn the screen over to Erica. Enjoy, everybody. Thank you, Jenna. Yeah. I'm sorry. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Like Jenna said, I was the editor who had the chance to um, interview Mally and write the story, but also had the chance to be there in person for the, for the photo shoot. Um, and we're just kind of hoping that this afternoon we can recreate some of that magic for you today and then answer, answer some of your questions at the end. So without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Sarah Winchester. Um, Hello, Sarah is everybody. a Boston-based photographer. She specializes in interiors and fine art photography. Um, Sarah was raised in Atlanta and spent time working as a creative director, brand manager, and in-house photographer before opening her own studio in 2009. Um, I personally loved Sarah's artistic philosophy. Um, she believes photography isn't about capturing, but about creating. And I think you can really see that in the images in this feature. You can. And, our next participant doesn't need much of an introduction with this audience. Originally from South Africa, Mally is a Boston-based interior design and textile artist. She was inspired to create her own fabric and wallpaper line after traveling to India. And the uh, Mally Scott Design Collection was launched the same year, actually, that Sarah opened her studio in 2009. 
Um, a wonderful year. I know. Just start anything. <laughs> yeah, right. Kelly's <laughs> <laughs> collection has grown to include 101 fabrics and 46 wallpapers, all produced right here in Massachusetts, which I think is very exciting. Um, and in terms of interior design, Mally is known for her prowess, layering the new with the old. Yes. Oh. As you can see, behind my head. <laughs> I placed, I placed some layers behind me. Yes, you did. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen with everyone so we can walk through this home together. So bear with me one moment here. Okay, you should all be able to see the opening shot here from our July August cover story. So like Jenna had mentioned, um, unfortunately, our, the features producer, Karen Lidbeck Brent, couldn't be with us today. But she did take the time to offer some insight. And I kind of wanted to mention some of that before we jump in with Mally and Sarah. Um, Karen has worked on shoot, shoots with Mally in the past. So she's well versed in Mally's collections and her style. So the photo you see in the front of Mally's Falmouth home here on the left was taken early in the morning because as Karen was telling me, the lighting was just absolutely beautiful. So basically she helped Mally pick out a dress and then proceeded to make Mally walk back and forth. 200 back. times out of my mind. <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> just across that porch, just to um, make sure Sarah got the, the perfect shot. Yeah. And Aaron told me that it, that process right there just completely illustrates why she loves photo shoots. She loves having a vision and then making that vision come to life. So Sarah. That moment, yeah. Sarah, it sounds like you were racing against the light from the moment you arrived that morning. He also yeah. took some branches, by the way. And we did prune. We <laughs> did do some pruning. We did some pruning. And I have anything for the shot. Yeah, we, we shot this in September of 2019, knowing it would be a summer feature in New England. We have that those very short, precious summer months. And then as summer days go and in, bleed into September, the the daylight gets short and precious. So when you're doing a shoot that um, really relies heavily on beautiful summer light, I've got like apps on my phone that tell me where the sun's gonna be at what time. And so, and we did do a bit of mapping out what shots we were gonna do that day and when we were gonna do them based on where the sun would be. Um, and then sometimes there's some beautiful happy accidents, but this was definitely, the sun was on the front of the house in the morning it was moving constantly through the trees and um, we went to town and Mally must have done about 400 steps in the first uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> yes, the dog and then you know, we tried walking along. It was, but I mean, that's the fun of photo shoots is you never really know what the right shot is going to be. You have to just go through the motions and then eventually it just comes to you that that's that. And you really got that, Sarah, beautifully. Thank you. I found the dead wood lying in my flower bed the other day. I was like, oh, that brings back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna jump on to the next image. Um, so here on the left, we have uh, Mally's foyer. So Mally, those chairs next to the front door are from um, Antiques on Cambridge Street. There is no more. But I remember you told me that you've had them for quite a while now. So maybe you could yeah. tell a story about them. Well, um, that's my, well, it is so sad. The shrinking amount of places that you can buy furniture um, these days. But Antiques on Cambridge Street was this wonderful dive. And um, I'd go there on a Sunday afternoon and mooch around. And I found those chairs and the paint sort of slightly coming off them. And my philosophy is... Buy something that you really love once and um, just keep it in your life forever. I mean, um, there's no reason to ever replace them with something else because, you know, they fell into my heart the first time around. And um, the Lee Jofa on the seat actually has really faded. Um, but I love that even more in a way. It's, it's part of my life and part of the fact that they've been in this house, you know, with sunlight on them over the years. I'm not 
a thrower outer, unfortunately. For... No, I, but I love that sentimentality. I think that's I think that's refreshing in a lot of ways. I think it's a South African thing because um, everything is so precious. Um, mm -hmm. If you come from a country where there's so much need, that you right. just can't bring yourself to throw away anything that's good and worthwhile, or else give it to someone else for another life. Sure. So then in the second photo, um, we get a glimpse of your formal living room. Yes. And I want to share another story from Karen because I, I thought this was so sweet. So the white flowers that we see there on the coffee table. So apparently Karen spotted these flowers growing on the side of the road on her way to, to Mally's house that morning. So Karen pulls to the side of the road, jumps out, cuts a bunch of these flowers, just knowing that they're going to come in handy. Yeah. And sure enough, there you see them, and they were used to obscure that um, dark fireplace box and just add another soft, elegant yeah. light to the room. And it's and beautiful. But Mally, tell us about the room that's just out of sight. Just on the other side is where my hubby works. Um, it's like a sunroom area, and we... Um, Working with Sally Weston, um, she is the sort of architect that really gets into how your family works. And my husband's very techy. So, um, he, but he likes to be close to the family and hear the goings on. So around the corner there is a built-in desk and a million cables that who knows what they do and screens and uh, so, sort of hidden away from the rest of the house, but there's no door, so he can pop out any time and come and get food or find out what the consternation is in the household. In okay. I thought this was interesting because he doesn't have a door, but that way he can be out of sight, but he can still hear what's happening. He doesn't like to be left out <laughs> of, the, of, of the goings on. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily get involved, just likes to be on the periphery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and move into um, the kitchen. Yeah. And I remember, so these cabinets here on the left yeah. are incredible. So they open from the kitchen, which, which is what we're seeing in the photo, but then they also open from the family room on the other side. So you have access to these cabinets from the family room and from the kitchen. And the cabinets are filled with Mally's collection of glass and ceramics. Yes. Um, and then, of course, in the image we see on the other side, we see the actual kitchen, which has that stunning Portuguese tile. Yeah. But conversation, you said you don't like to scatter your collections all over the house. You like to be all about. I like them to be intentionally put together. Um, I, think, I think we're all considering that more these days with our Zoom calls and our webinars. So, can you offer yes. some tips for this well curated shelf? Well, I mean, I just like my things to be in, in a certain amount of order. So when we have friends to stay and I, you know, open one of those cupboards and somebody has put the yellow bowl with the whatever glass things, um, it just freaks me. It, it's the only thing that I'm OCD about because I'm, I'm very careful about placing the things that I like together and so that they, like that yellow jug and that, they sort of talk to each other mm -hmm. and I think that's isn't that the trick of layering that it looks like you made it happen it didn't just you didn't take it out of your shopping bag and just drop it there mm -hmm. and um, feeling the human intent quietens the whole thing down well that's my view mm -hmm. um, of how having so much stuff in one house doesn't look like a bomb went off um, just keeping it intentional sure. as much as you can. Great. Oh, and the good thing about those cupboards, so we are going um, can I quickly interject, Erica? Um, I told Sally Weston that I sure. didn't want to, um, oh, can you go back to those uh, kitchen cupboards? Um, I didn't want to hear the children's television because they were um, MTV stage. And so um, I, I didn't want to put a wall there. And Sally had seen this setup in some butler's pantry or something. She is so good at evoking old time houses to make themselves useful for today. Mm -hmm. And so um, I can shut off the children's family room on the other side and their lights 
that shine down on all my little objects as well. I mean, it, it was a stroke of brilliance on her part. And also, I didn't have to hear, you know, MTV on the other <laughs> side of the wall. <laughs> okay. So we're going to move on to um, two outtakes from the photo shoot that were not published in the actual feature. And in the first, we see the formal dining room, which is adjacent uh -huh. to that living room we saw earlier. Um, but then we also have this detailed shot of your overflowing collection of, of serving wear. Yes. What I love here is that we see this really beautiful blue and white palette, but it's definitely subtle. And so my question for you, Mally, is how do you do blue and white without it becoming cliche nowadays? Um, well, I think that what happens to me is I think I'm doing blue and white and then I'll see a green polychrome um, plate that I love so much. Mm. And so I just shove it in. And um, <laughs> I think um, we were talking about rules earlier and um, rules are just so boring and restrictive. And um, if you're feeling it, just add an African beaded animal. And um, it's all about trusting yourself. And you are your own audience. Make it nice for you. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if nobody else understands why you've got funny little um, glass balls on your, on your shelf. I love them. Um, and people sense, I think, that you are being authentic and not contrived. And that um, always ends up with um, a successful collection. Um, authenticity, that is, that's the name of the game, I think. And it's funny mm -hmm. how people can pick it up. If, you, if you're trying to be fancy, it always falls flat, I think. Well, I have, I have a question then for you, Mally. Um, just given, I know what happens on photo shoots and Karen's not here, but did Karen do any styling of these shelves? Or um, they, they I was... some things, I've got two sets of shelves. They took some things from the other side because as you know, um, the camera makes everything look empty after you've been on a million photo shoots. Yeah. So, um, but nothing is brought in at all. No, I was going to say, we didn't, we didn't move much. I mean, there was some micro adjustments and straightening of things and, and going back to the previous shot, but Mally does have that, you know, your eye kind of naturally goes, the yellows, talk to the yellows here, the, you know, you, the there's a the little green concentration and then some white and then the little blue and, and that was all there. And I mean, if we were to come in and style a, sh a shelf like that, it would take us like two, an hour and a half to get that one shot, <laughs> but it was there. <laughs> and also you can see from my white shelf behind me, um, that's exactly <laughs> how it is. It looks yeah. like. Well, you can see her, the paint brushes and her jars there. And I love that. Yeah. Love it. Right. Right. We're going on. This is my favorite image from the shoot. I probably shouldn't say that, but it's my favorite image from the shoot. Um, this is this beautiful informal dining room with this lovely view of the ocean behind it. Um, and this table, Mally, was one of the most interesting tables I've ever had the pleasure of sitting at. And oh, the Erica, that's so nice. But the four of us did get to sit down. And you just have to is, dig into your cupboards, that's it. I mean, not everything has to match. That's what I, um, you know, make it look festive and, um, I think the masterful thing about that shot was Sarah getting the blue ocean behind because that is not an easy, I mean, without anything looking particularly blown out, that was quite an amazing thing to achieve. Yeah, Sarah, tell us how you do that. Because I also remember there being like an umbrella in the, in the back. Yeah. We were kind of, you were very conscientious of positioning the camera so we didn't catch that in the photo. Yeah. These ones in particular, these shots where you really have to, you want to see the outside and the inside, you know, if you bring your phone up and try to take a picture, even a, a camera, they don't see, the lens doesn't see what our eye actually sees. Our eye can naturally adjust from light from the outside and the inside and combine them together and compute in your brain and you see that, but the camera doesn't do that. So you approach it um, 
different like different plates. So I'll shoot for the inside exposure wise, then I'll shoot for the outside exposure wise, and then I'll give myself some options in between. And this is where the um, wonderful world of modern digital photography comes in. I can take these plates in post production and combine them and layer them in post um, as if you would a negative in a good old fashioned dark room where you'd probably cut and combine two different negatives that were exposed at different um, levels, but now it it's came like out so amazing. The it big really fancy is. computer. We have a question, Sarah, for you. That's oh, really sure. what you just said. Um, uh, one of our attendees says, "What is in your lighting kit? And are you shooting tethered or iPad? If you don't mind sharing that." Yeah, I shoot tethered to my laptop because I like the um, having the flexibility of dumping it in Photoshop right then and there to show my client like, hey, look, this is how we're gonna do it. iPad, the Photoshop app for iPad just isn't quite there yet to have all the things that you can do on the desktop version or my laptop version. I do have a light kit with me, a pro photo kit. Um, I use some of it here. It kind of depends. Ideally, I like to shoot with no studio lights. I like to see what lighting the home brings in and you have the feeling of the windows were there, even though if you can't see a window, but um, that's not always available. Yeah, I think but... you're really good at light though, Sarah, Thank because you. that looks like lunchtime. That <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's and not then we sat down. Heavy. Yeah. And then we got to sit down and eat it, which is perfect. I think yeah. that was another like scheduling thing. We're like, we need to shoot the lunch table because yeah. we are hungry. <laughs> we have to eat it right now. And the flowers were all from the garden. And um, so I still had roses, which was good at the beginning of September. And I mean, it all just came into place so beautifully. The tablecloth comes from South Africa in my suitcase from Mungo. <laughs> and um, the... Straw mats, place mats, come from the tourist shop at the top of the road in Plet. And um, the plates are from my little collection. And, you know, blue anthropology, glasses, and um, Sarah's friends, Rosé. It's all a mix oh, yeah. of... Uh, and, and Mally, those candlesticks are just to die for. I bought them in the... Um, best vintage store in New Bedford. I've got a few clients in that area and I always pass by a Kushnet. And um, mm -hmm. it's the most wonderful place. It's next to, you know, um, a methadone clinic. So you need to lock your car <laughs> when you go down there. But it is, I mean, it's an old style scratch. And every now and again, you'll just find some amazing thing. Those Swedish red j candlesticks, I just fell upon them. They're in my life now. And so then the food shot that we have on, the, on the facing page. Um, Sarah, you obviously, you photographed that from above. I was there, there were ladders involved. It was a little uh, precarious at one point. But I know, I mean, obviously shooting food can be very difficult. And yeah, but this is, this is what it looked like. I mean, this is how Mally prepared her lunch. And that's when I saw this happening. I was like, oh my gosh, we have to get this as well. I mean, this is Don't toss a part of the beans It's how you live. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pulling out these baskets just for a photo shoot. It was all happening. And then we, this wasn't a planned shot. And so then, yeah, we jump, jumped up on the countertop barefoot trying to get the shot. <laughs> I think we had to move the basil leaf a little bit to have yeah. it be um, a little mm -hmm. more photogenic. But, um, but this was lunch. It was, it yeah. was wonderful. Yeah. And I love that chopping block that Sally Weston put into my um, island. Mm. And um, one of the clever things that she did was she inset it about four inches lower than the island so that it's a comfortable chopping um, height for me. I mean, the woman thinks of everything. It's just such a... You know, because chopping up here on counter height isn't that great. So, I mean, that's my spot in the kitchen mm -hmm. that I hang out. That's my little triangle, the sink, the chopping block, and then over to the stove. It works so well. Great. And I have to point out, going back to the, the dining room page, I love the rock as holding open the door. I just, uh, that's, I, I don't know, I, I love that little detail. Uh, that's my invention. It's so real. It's just... <laughs> 
It's it's a perfect doorstop. It's got little, um, you know, those little round um, stick on um, uh, that you put on the bottom of a chair. It's got felt... three of those at the bottom, so it doesn't. Yeah. Cool. That's, it's wonderful. Okay, so we're going to move forward to um, another shot that was not in the feature, and this is an up close shot of that gorgeous table. Um, I love the little blue salt dishes. I just I think that's such an elegant touch. Um, and there's the gazpacho that we were enjoying that day. And if you check your chat section right now, um, Jenna's actually going to post a link to the recipe for that soup. So I'm take a picture of this too. If anyone wants to know what to make for dinner tonight, there you go. You get you got your recipe in the in the chat section. Um, and then of course on the right side we get to see um, our menu for that day. And Mally, I'm still thinking about, about the Niswa salad and then obviously the rose. But um, just tell us a little bit about what goes into creating the perfect summer lunch in um, well, I think that everyone is trying to um, be healthy at the moment. Mm. And so um, it's really nice to serve fresh, delicious ingredients to your friends. Also, I think doing the table in a festive way really says welcome. And like, it's, it's a gift to put the effort into having your friends um, over to come and have lunch, you know, they've put a pause on their life. So, you know, I, I, I always think that just doing flowers and setting the table in a, an amusing way is really a gift to, um, to say, you know, I'm so glad you came around. And yeah. then I'm um, keeping the food light and tasty. And I love European taverna type lunches. I mean, who knows when we'll go to Europe again, but um, you can eat um, niçoise like that in the south of France, um, just in a little taverna with fresh tuna on top, and maybe it's slightly different, but it's sort of, um, it feels international. It feels a little bit special to have something with a European flavor for lunch. And then I will, it comes from the French bakery, um, in Falmouth, this this French lady arrived, and she's like magnifique. <laughs> so that was good. I love that you did bring in the local with the, the French bakery and then the local greens and the even lark those, those, those local, local biscuits from Essex Mass are. I mean, I don't know if I should tell you about them because it's hard to just eat apple out of the box. They just crumbly and. Just like some somebody made them, really nice. Everybody, take your screenshots right now. Yeah. Oh, sorry, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say I've shot a couple of tables for Mally for um, you know the heading home dinners and events, and I always love how she and it's making things. It's formal, but it's informal. Puts all the silverware on the left side. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I shot it for you, I was like, you know, Emily Post, Southern girl, coming in like, no, yeah, <laughs> have the knife and the spoon here, and then the fork, and then she's like, no. Yeah. Just line them all up here and then put the napkin here. I and think it's nice for your friends to see that you've made an effort, but it's casual. So yeah. they don't have to be on their best behavior. They can enjoy themselves. Although we did not open the rosé till the end of the shoot. I will we say. did not. <laughs> we didn't have it in the <laughs> shoot all afternoon. That would have been... Mm -hmm. That um, would have been snoozy. Yeah, yeah. So all in love with Molly's miniature long-haired dachshund, Isabella. Yes. Um, so you see She's her. in the basement now, relegated to the basement. <laughs> Isabella. And then for those of you who have recently um, read the article, you might remember this. Um, so in this bathroom image, you're going to see the, the chair in here. And Molly loves to place vintage chairs in bathrooms as a way to break up, break up hard surfaces, but more practically, just as a place to, to put your clothes, which... Yeah. That was a, a great idea. Um, but I want to jump to the porch because it's my second favorite image of the, of the feature, but it also was the shot that made the cover. Um, so Mally, I know that you, yeah. you are in this, the Falmouth house off and on all year. Yeah. Uh, how do you change up this space to reflect the seasons? It obviously has a very summer vibe here. It has a very summer vibe. And actually, unfortunately, um, 
Falmouth being what it is, um, it's not actually that lovely, enticing to sit outside, but what we do do for the shoulder seasons like early spring and into the fall, we have lots of throws mm -hmm. and um, lots of pillows. And um, I learned this in South Africa, that big Lee sofa, mm -hmm. deep sofa, um, it, it's just a, the perfect, perfect piece of furniture for taking an afternoon snooze. Um, it's so comfortable and it really turns a porch into a proper room that you have got um, a really, you know, it, you can sit there for hours, and I do. And then the ottoman, perfect in front, so my hubby and I can sit there both with our feet up. And um, I actually designed that ottoman to be the perfect height for putting our feet up. So it's, sometimes it's a good idea to have a wife that's an um, interior <laughs> designer. <laughs> Molly, we have a question. Someone wants to know where that fabulous hat is and the it's from on the in the uh, foreground there. Where did the hat come from? Oh, it comes from um our friends, um Melissa and um Sarah, what's her what's her website called? Two Webster. Oh yeah. She um has got such a beautiful eye. She's actually uh, and heading home with us. She and my friend Nancy do the food for heading home. And she had a pop-up shop in Osterville last year with just the most delectable things. She's just got a great, great eye. I think it's, you know, it's from somewhere in South America. Melissa, I, I wanted... Melissa oh, Melissa Webster? What was the what answer? What, who is it? Melissa? Melissa, Melissa McRae. Oh, Miss, Melissa McRae. Okay. Yeah. I think it's called Two Webster. You'll find her on Instagram. Oh, okay. Great. I wanted to pop up to the bathroom shot because I had a memory of it. That was the last shot we got of yes, the day. That's right. And I think it was like seven o'clock at night and you and Kristen are downstairs yelling, the sun is setting, come see the sunset. And Karen and I are upstairs. We're like, we know the sun is setting. We're trying to get this last shot. And I think we got it. We might have we, opened the rosé at that stage. Yeah, we <laughs> ran downstairs and we watched the sun sink I, into the ocean. Um, it was so at your tenacity, Sarah. Because <laughs> I'm like, that seems like a wrap to me. And she's like, no, 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 let's just try it from this angle. And I'm like, oh, I, you know, when it's over in my brain, it's over. But you're always there for the next shot. They're, they're long days, but it is that like, oh, they are long the days. thrill of the shot is, is yeah. what keeps me going. Yeah. That is so fun that you caught that. On that bathroom shot though, what is the wallpaper? We have a question oh, from uh, Lee. Oh, it's Lee Jofa and it's, um, it's paper dolls. Remember those cut out paper dolls that um, mm -hmm. I used to love when I was a child? Um, and it's like 1920s paper dolls. I, I don't know if it's still current. It would be interesting to find out if it is. Mm. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Looking at my copy. Okay. Really, didn't you say that those, when, when your girls were little, that was like their favorite? Role? Absolute favorite, favorite thing. I, you know, I put three things that I really like for the house under their noses, and then they feel like they really designed their own spaces. But, um, you know, not really. Um, I sort of curated the ideas before they, you know, said yes or no. But they adore, and even now they're grown ups, they love that bathroom. It's the, that wallpaper was great. All right, so I'm going to move on to um, two more unpublished shots from the shoot. Um, the one on the left feels very Fourth of July right now, and then up to the right we've got Sweet Isabella napping on the landing. Um, Mally, you had a great story the other day about the the painting here on the left. Oh yes, um, I have never won anything in my life, and I bought a whole sheaf of tickets at the Concord Art Association because I love that painting so much, and my number came up. I was so excited. Um, it is just, there's something so friendly but patriotic about a chicken with little stars all over it. 
and um and and actually they stick on little stars you know that a child would use in a project mm -hmm. um and so those are the sort of things that just stay in your life and then i love juju hats before target had them you know um, and discovered some little trader in in africa that i could buy them from so i mean this is the problem with the whole global thing i'm not going to take my juju hat down just because they're overdone because i still like the story of africa and america for me and um and the african basket that came squashed in one of my suitcases as well so um that's what i think don't over edit i i'm an anti over editor i'm sorry it's just not the way things other people feel at the moment, but um, that's your story. Why take it apart? I just don't believe in it at all. Exactly. And actually, I think we got that shot the next morning. Mally was kind enough, to, she hosted me that evening so I didn't have to drive okay, back home. Sarah. And I got it that morning because I knew it was, it's your, um, your collection, your furniture collection with Dow, that collection. little chair. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that, yes, exactly. Oh, yes, my, my little um, kitchen chair that I designed for Dull that sort of reminds me of a old-fashioned kitchen chair you'd sit on in a Greek taverna or something. Um, it's, and then we chose all the fun colors. Yeah, it looks cute there. And the photo of Isabella is so sweet. So, Sarah, I just have to ask you for all the animal lovers out there, what's more difficult to photograph, dogs or cats? Probably cats because no, they children. are cats. Children. children. Yeah. Yes, children. <laughs> Designers. No. Um, <laughs> actually, Mally is great. Um, but Isabel's a pro. I've, I've photographed oh, a lot yeah. of Mally's stuff. Her and she's like, oh, been. hi. Yeah, should I be in the shot now? Would you like me no. here? <laughs> oh, she loves it. Yeah, absolutely loves great. it. Perfect. Oh, yeah. tell us what's in the bowl on the on the little um, the little table over oh, there. Oh, um, we we zoomed in. The conch shells that I broken up that I picked up in Nantucket from in a that's an African basket that I brought back from South Africa. Mm. And then when we zoomed in, I realized that there was a horseshoe crab which we can pick up on the beach here in Falmouth. It's, I think it's the only place in the world that they occur. Sarah knows about um, the whole um, sea life. The ocean, yes. Yeah. And they, um, they, they were around in the time of dinosaurs too, actually. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the summer, they wash up on the beach and they're just the most marvelous little mm. shells. And they last for years. Absolutely amazing shape. All right. And then, so we're going to move on to the last spread here. Yes. Um, so over on the left, we see one of the guest rooms. Yes. Um, it happens to be the one that Mally's mom um, used when she was still able to travel from South Africa to the kids. And these, Mally, these are your fabrics. These seeing. are my fabrics. That's um, yeah. the, the headboard is this um, sort of Suzani type fabric that I designed after going to um, uh, Istanbul with my good friend um, Imogen and then I love small patterns so I stole one of the little images and made the curtain fabric which is called Imogen because I love like when I design a fabric I like it to sort of have some connection to my real life and then the little bench has got um, Suzani love um, on it which I mean, not everyone would put that in the bedroom. They don't really marry that well, but I like things that are unexpected. Mm -hmm. And then in this last shot here, this is um, the main bedroom. My bedroom, yes. And Sarah, the, the lighting in here is... Oh my God. It's so... It was yeah. It really yeah. was beautiful at the end of the day. Yeah, they don't call it the golden hour for nothing. I mean, it was literally just like streaming in Georgia. Uh, but the yeah. is, is the perfect room to, to be shooting the golden hour as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Those yellow tall curtains. And so those curtains to me, Mally, just, I know they were a bit of a splurge when you bought they them. They were a splurge. That's a lot of yardage going around there. 
the story you told me about them to me just really sums up your decorating philosophy. So I thought we could kind of end with, with that with that story of those beautiful curtains. Well, um, I saw that Brunswick, Brunswick 12 ages ago. I mean, we're talking, you know, 15 years ago. And I'd never seen yellow twelve and such a beautiful golden color. And I just set my heart on it. And, um, you know, it still feels just perfect with the blue ocean behind. It's these curtains are faded on the edge. But when I arrive um, and walk into that bedroom, it's so welcoming. And they're just going to stay there forever. Um, they just signify um, that time after time, you know, this is what we need in life, this continuity. Um, it would break my heart to get rid of them. So um, they'll probably be there forever. And, um, and also spend the money well once and then live with it and love it along the way. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Mally. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, thank you. Karen. That her thank you, Erica. Uh, I, I hope everyone who's listening today really understood or, or understands what a great time we had telling the story of this home. Um, so, Jenna, I'm going to ask you, do we have questions from the live audience? We, I, I definitely have questions that have come in through people who have registered that we'd like to touch on, but I want to see if we've got any questions from the audience, live audience, we want to. So we have one about this, uh, this last uh, photo we were just talking about. Um, one of the uh, attendees wants to know about that writing desk in that. Oh, yeah. that's also from Cambridge Street. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, we lost our image. Let Thank me get that back again. for you. I like to have a place to hide and work a little bit in my bedroom. Um, it's just, it's, it's good to have a little escape and close the door. And um, sometimes I paint up there. It just, um, it's my little nook. Hmm. And then kind of a follow up on that. Um, yeah. You did share um, your, your love of thrifting and you, sh you shared one source. Do you want to tell us any other of your favorite shops? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Please. <laughs> well, um, strangely enough, we live in a very, very good thrifting area in the Northeast. A lot of people came from Europe and um, settled here. And so even in, I live in Lincoln, but in the town next to me in Concord, we have three rarely excellent antique shops and you know i just love a 25 dollar little jug that you can put some flowers in and give to a friend when you go and have dinner with them so thoroughly antique um upstairs antiques and northbridge are all in concord center and they are well curated well priced and Whenever I'm going to the post office, I give myself 10 minutes to just shoot in there um, when I'm meant to be like putting my samples into the mail. Um, and then down here in the Cape, I go off with my daughter who she just, she, she, whether she got it in her DNA or not, she has to love thrifting with me. So we love going to Sandwich, which is just such a gorgeous, settled, old school Cape town and it's got one of those um collaborative um some really good antiques in there but there's some nice junky things at the back and um oh there's a really dusty one just past the airport um as you go past the Barnstable airport um which is you really have to dig but the nicest people and you get to know the characters um over the years and People that buy funny stuff on auction and sell it in a um, funny junkie store are an unusual and interesting breed. And um, you've got to chat to them too. I don't know how they feed themselves when they see dollar teacups, but anyway. So, okay, we have an eagle eye um, attendee. Yeah. He noticed that the lamps on the hutch behind you were 
not in the photo of that. Oh, Sarah, did you take those down? Oh, somebody did. Yeah. He edited me. <laughs> we did. We wanted to show off the plate, the collection, because um, the, the the story is is your collection, and mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of verticals going on with the backs of the chairs yeah. and more verticals of the lamps. You um, and that's one of the, <laughs> yeah. That, and that's one of those situations where the camera sees something different. My famous quote when we start getting shots going and everyone's like, how's it look? How's it look? I'm like, let's just, let's see what the camera sees. You know, you confess You're right. up that's to a certain thing point. Actually having a working image right there. I mean, yeah. in the old days when you had to do that Polaroid thing, it was so arduous. This is just great working like this. Yeah, it's lovely. Okay, we have another question on your the wicker on the porch. Is that you? What can you tell us about your wicker? Wicker on the porch? porch. Um, yes. It's a hodgepodge. Um, the original wicker is Palachek, that quite basic Palachek. Um, and then I needed some more chairs. And so I added, do you remember main cottage furniture that went bankrupt? I think they're up and running again. <laughs> um, that they've got that old style vibe as well. So I added a couple of those. And then um, the, I love just having other odd places to sit. So those camp seats I got from Serena and Lily a couple of years ago. And um, then the funny orangey like turban hat things I found online on some hipster blog, um, but I love them. <laughs> <laughs> Great. What did you, um, okay. Um, main cottage furniture. I think they got rescued, but they okay. have very beachy, you know, main type thing. Sure, excellent. Okay, I'm writing this down. We're gonna f try and follow up um, some of this on Instagram. Uh, okay. Anyone who wants to them from home will share some of these. Sarah, I have a question for you about the painting behind you. Oh, <laughs> I am in my family's home down in South Georgia right now. So this is, that's my mother's. Um, it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a Southern artist. It looks like it's like Marsh and then um, the live oaks and stuff. But yeah, I'm down in the jungles of South Georgia right now. So it looks great in that shot. It's a welcome zoom background you've got there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let's see what else I've got. Um, oh, here's, wait, did I ask this already? How long per shot would you say on average does it take? Um, yeah. The first shot well, takes yeah. like four hours. Yeah, the first shot feels like it's like a century. Mm -hmm. And and then when you get that kind of momentum, yeah. like the bathroom shot took like maybe 15, 20 minutes. I mean, it was like, bam. Um, it kind of just depends. The family room shot didn't take that long. One of the things you do, Sarah, that I think is really good is you tell me what the next shot is going to be. Mm. So I can sort of do things that might make it easier for you when you come into the shot. Like right. I'll say, oh, these flowers are lovely. And you're going, meh. Well, maybe not. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, we're ready for the next shot. It does move yeah. this along a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. It takes a bit to get going, and then you get in rhythm, and then you have lunch, and then you kind of like got to ramp up again. It's it's a it's an interesting ebb and flow of the day, um, and then you open up the rosé at the end, and it tastes so sweet and delicious and <laughs> well earned. Yeah. There's a lot of friendship involved. Yeah, in it it's going. fun. We have a great job. It's wonderful. Yeah. Erica, could you find, someone's asking about the salad recipe. Would you be able to share your screen again to show that menu? There's a description. Um, Actually, I wrote a whole description of how I made my salad for Erica yep. that you can put up um, with all the little details. Um, but we, we couldn't fit it into this, but um, Erica has it. So, um, they can us or we can maybe post it on our, um, maybe we'll post it on our Facebook, our Facebook yeah. for this so everyone can see. Yeah, it was a nice description, yeah. Yeah, 
um, we can do that. I wrote it out for Erica, and then she wanted to make it. So yes. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> we have to add it sometime. <laughs> yeah. Again, just because we've um, a couple times today, we've talked about Sally Weston, who was the architect on the house. Yes. And Sally asked a question in advance. She wants to know, Mally, um, what's the most important thing you have discovered during your many years of decorating? Um, I have discovered that um, listening is the most important tool that you have um, and creating trust between you and your client because Without trust, um, there's no way forward. And also um, the language of decorating, and Jenna will know this, you have to learn how to describe your thoughts because creative people can see it in their brains. But um, you can't expect someone who isn't in this world to understand, you can't just say the curtains will be lovely. They just don't, you have to be able to describe it in language that um, people that aren't in our world understand. And the more um, the communication lines are open and the better the project in the end. Mm. And you've got to do the work to pull your, it's the narrative. The narrative is the thing, the story that mm. you're trying to convey. And it's not a quick thing. I mean, I know that people have these websites where um, you just choose the carpet, choose the lamps and everything, which I'm sure is fine, but um, then it doesn't end up like that person's house. And that's how I like to decorate. I like it to look like their house through my view of the world, but specifically their house and the way their family lives, um, you know, and that's, you can't do that overnight really right okay yeah. Jenna do we have any more live or I have a couple of others here that were submitted early yeah we, well there's one a question about the sconces in the entry who makes them? Uh, that was, um that was from FDO at in the design center um they don't exist anymore unfortunately <sighs> They're so I amazing. Think it's changing times that we're living in. Everything's so consolidated. Um, and Bill Elenoff, who is retired, had this most exquisite showroom off um, the Lee Jofa showroom. I don't know if you guys used to go visit, but you could always find something wonderful in there. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question about um, layering family photos your thoughts on unlayering family photos, and then along those same lines, your thoughts of mixing uh, the different metals in picture frames. Well, mixing metals used to be like a big no-no um, in the old days, but this is, um, I love the influence of young design on our design and how millennial bloggers and designers have just really thrown away a lot of the rules of, um, you know, your, your, if your faucet's a nickel, then your um, handles of your cupboard have to be nickel or whatever. Um, and now we just mix metal. In fact, it's really nice to have the pop of brass or copper or another metal um, mixed in. Um, I love that young designers just don't design in a rules-based way at all. And they've taught us, um, I think Jenna called it, a, it's circular learning. Mm -hmm. They learn from us, but we're also grabbing so much from the blogging community and repurposing and vintage and how they, um, they, they place a lot of value on things from the family and found items and that's definitely come back into the mainstream and I, I really I love that I hate waste mm -hmm. um, that kind of touches on one other question we got um, do you have any advice on com combining antiques and contemporary pieces yes well um, a lot of people sold their brown furniture um, when they were told that brown furniture was yucky. 
which was so tragic because in fact, um, brown furniture really anchors a room and usually um, old brown furniture that your auntie gave you is solid wood. It's made of beautiful materials. So um, I think the juxtaposition of modern lamps on an old table. I mean, think of someone like Axel Favut, who is the master of this taken down, um, amazing spare light fitting, and then a monk's table underneath it. Um, if, if you stick to like one vibe, it all just goes flat. But if you just put some amazing Sputnik um, lamp above a traditional dining table and a sprinkling of chairs, it just has life and vibrancy. Um, don't throw away your old stuff, really. Um, you'll just regret it. Those old chest of drawers in a, in a bedroom, everything's white and clean and bright and then a nice brown chest of drawers with a big modern lamp on top, just nice, cool. <laughs> I'm getting overexcited. <laughs> I'm always decorating for a client that doesn't exist. <laughs> if you build it, they will come, right? <laughs> We're getting to the end of our hour. So, um, Jen, I didn't know if we had any other questions we wanted to get in real quickly or... or... Oh, yes, I have one, oh, I have one shout out to Robert Lesser. I love how he cropped the cover image. It was just like, he really kind of like, it was such a long, amazing patio, but, and we, we tried to get, you know, in the other shots you can see, there's like a whole nother seating section. And then for the cover, I love how he was like, it just here, just he sitting there awesome. next to Maui. Yeah. I love working with him. Yeah. What so thank you, Robert. The one? Well, so this is, I've got a question for each of you. Um, there, well, since you were just talking about the cover, uh, we have a question about how, if you could approximate, how long does the editing process take? Actually, the shoot is done, you're back at your desk, and then what kind of oversight does the magazine have in this part of it? And I can chime in there, but yeah, yeah talk about how you edit. So for a shot like the one of the, the informal dining area where we had lunch, that one took, like I said, three, about three plates for me to combine in post-production. So that one took a bit longer, but one like the bathroom was like, bam, shot. I made sure the lines were straight. I would, I made sure, you know, it was the, the color saturation, um, color correction, and then that was about it. But this one took a bit longer. So it really just depends on the, on the shot. Um, but again, in a, a place like a home like Mally's and, and these, amazing homes where everything's it's it's there it's done you're not holding up a picture you're not um adding things because this is this is Mally's house this this wasn't but you never really know what the editor is going to choose from the pictures that you know I have no idea I mean we have our favorites obviously but that's it's nice actually I'm a terrible editor especially with my own stuff because I'm like I like everything <laughs> you know, it's and it's I like seeing what kind of you know, edited vision comes out of all the stuff. That's a specific brain that you yeah. have, you know, yeah. that knows what's going to work. And absolutely. And then, of course, when when we get the the images, we, we're an, that much removed from it. We sometimes we have to edit for space. Um, and as we're shaping the story, um, that that's how we make decisions on what to focus on and what not uh, what to what to keep for the Zoom presentation, where we're gonna show you the things that didn't. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something. Um, and, and I had no idea about Zoom last year. Yes, and so we'll, Robert and I will do um, an edit together as, um, as we're, we're initially getting started um, on the storytelling. Erica, uh, we'll communicate with the writers and then ultimately when that layout starts to take shape that's when the decisions really become um, kind of finalized and again space often plays into that too but um, I, for me it's it's an evolving process um, it's very 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 visual as um, you spend more and more time with the images I can't I can do a, a, a quick edit when I first see a batch um, but um, oftentimes it's, it's 
I'm dipping into it over and over again and, and shaping wow. things. It, it must be so hard to decide what to leave in and what to take out. Yeah, sometimes it really is. Sometimes it's really easy, <laughs> but oh. sometimes it's really hard. And, and, and like Sarah, when, um, when, when a project really speaks to you, you want to you show everything. Yeah. But I think that's why it's so great having such a team. You know, you've got Mally who created the space and then we come in and create the images and then an editor. It really takes these kind of multi-layers to And I think that was Clint's, um, Clint's brilliance because he um, got to know me a little bit when we were traveling in South Africa together. And um, I mean, he, he had dinner in my house in South Africa and he kind of understood my vibe and, you know, having the lunch, was that his idea? Um, like having food and, cause that's so much part of me. Um, and when he suggested the photo shoot, I don't, I don't know if it was him, but I think so. yeah. it might've been him because, you know, he, he's sort of been in my space before. Yeah. Well, we have one more question. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more, Erica? Do you um, no, I think, I think we'll good. We'll take your okay. question. I have, one, and wrap it up. I have this one last one from uh, Rachel Duffy. What are your key secrets? This is for Mally to, to coffee table decorating and layering accessories. Oh, you big coffee table. So. Uh, I love a um, a tray on a coffee table, um, mm -hmm. and so much so that I actually um, got dull furniture to make some big hunky trays for me. Yeah, because nice. um, it's so nice when you're um, entertaining to put you know, a bowl of nuts, maybe a um, bottle of wine, so people can just help themselves, and a little, um, maybe a little bowl of, of flowers or something. Um, when you aren't entertaining, just having a tray that you can put stuff into, so it puts it in a, um, it puts it in a frame. Um, you know, a small box on top of some books, and maybe a little, keepsake that somebody gave you. Um, I love those little round glass, I don't know, Victorian, whatever they are, keepsakes that people bought in, um, in when they were traveling in Venice. Just those sort of things, mm -hmm. like a little um, story, a little narrative, but within um, a tray, because then it's not scattered all over the place. It needs to be framed. It needs to be intentional. Things need to look intentional. You have to do the work, sadly. <laughs> in many things, in all things. In many things. <laughs> in all, yeah. Well, that's all that I've got over here in um, the Q&A box and chat. Good. So, well, we are at five o'clock, so I think... Uh, I think well, we'll thank you so much, guys, for oh, doing this. wonderful. Honestly, yeah. Just... It's so nice to see your faces too. I know, I miss everyone. I miss yeah. people. Yeah. Little <laughs> people. I, I miss, I mean, I don't miss them. They're around, <laughs> I mean, all the time. <laughs> I miss adult people. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Erica. It's oh, been yeah. really, really good fun. A little nerve wracking in the beginning. I was like, do I? Can I? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jenna. All right. Wonderful. Yeah, I guess um, I guess we can just sign off. All right. Okay. Um, Jenna, will you put up the the uh, Balinese one on the Facebook page that I sent? Yes. Yeah. I okay. want I'm going to add that. I have a couple other things too that you mentioned. You want to share great. with everybody? Figure that Hi, out. Too. Okay. Hi. Have a great evening. Happy Hi. Fourth, everybody. Bye. Bye. Happy Fourth. Bye. You too. Bye -bye.